Hey team, as promised, here is the solution to step seven, problem number two. So we have Mark who throws a football to Johnny at an angle of 30 degrees. If Johnny is five meters away from Mark when he catches it, what was its initial velocity? So I'm gonna start as always by drawing a picture. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's Mark, here's Johnny, and let's go ahead and draw in the football and its path. So we have Mark and Johnny who are again five meters apart. So that is going to be our range as you hopefully remember from step number six. And we have our football which is thrown at a 30 degree angle with a mystery initial velocity that we want to find. Now. We're going to start by going ahead and filling out our table for the x direction. And for the x direction, we're going to be looking at this point right here. So at that point, we have our displacement in the x direction, an initial velocity, a final velocity, an acceleration, and a time. So our displacement in the x direction is going to be 5 meters. Our initial velocity in the x direction is what we want to find. And um, I'm going to also go ahead and put in the acceleration, which is 0. And I'm going to go ahead and put in t as my air time, which you hopefully remember from step 5. Now, if I was going to do an equation here, I would use, of course, as you have been using continuously in the x direction, displacement in x equals v initial x times time plus one half times acceleration in x times time squared. So of course this is going to cancel out since our acceleration is zero. And we can go ahead and plug in what we know. So our displacement is five. V initial x we want to find and our time is our air time. So this is sad, right? We have one equation and we have two unknowns, one and two. We need to figure out a way to do this so that we only have, so we have the same number of unknowns as equations. And I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here because that's very important. We need the same number of unknowns as equations. So that means we need a second equation. We've already used up the x direction, so no more x, so we're going to have to go to y. Let's go ahead and write the table for the y direction. So dy, v initial y, v final y, a, y, and t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point in the y direction that we know a lot about, which is this point here, y max. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's the point I have the most information about. Um, though, as you will see in a second, it's not without its problems choosing this point. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, our initial velocity in the y direction, we don't know. We're not going to worry about what y max actually is because, as you learned from range problems, that's not actually super important. Our final velocity in the y direction is zero, as it always is. Our acceleration is negative 9.8, again, as it always is. And let's go ahead and put in units here. And I'm going to just call this t, t. Um, and of course, that t here is t max, which you should remember from step four. And let's go ahead and write an equation for the y direction. So we have v final y equals v initial y plus a y times t or zero equals v initial y minus 9.8t. So here we have two equations, and it really doesn't seem like we've made anything better, right? Because we still have, we have two equations, sure, but we also have four unknowns now. So from a first glance, it seems as though we've just made our problem worse by adding more things to figure out. Thankfully, all of our unknowns are related to one another. So let's start with time. As you should remember from step five, step five, t air is just gonna equal two times t at our maximum point. 
So we can replace this T air here with just two, which is, um, excuse me, sorry guys. I wanna just make sure you remember that we are writing T max here as T. So instead of having T air, we can go ahead and replace T air with two T max or two T. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, put that in our equation, we get five equals V initial X times 2t. So that's one unknown dealt with. So now we have two equations and three unknowns. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of another one. And to do that, I'm going to need my triangles. Specifically, I'm going to need my V initial triangle. So here's V initial. We're thinking all the way back to step one. V initial is here. V initial in the x direction is our horizontal component and V initial in the y direction is our vertical component. And this angle here is a known angle, it's 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and I am going to write V initial in the y direction. So this guy here, let me go ahead and highlight him. He's green. So V initial in the y direction in terms of V initial. So in terms of V initial, we're going to be using our sines and cosines. So I know that the sine, oh, yikes. Let's change, oh, no, green is fine. I know that the sine of 30 degrees is V initial over V initial in the Y direction. Or I can write V initial, wait, guys, I messed that up. I'm sorry, it's equal to opposite over adjacent, or opposite over hypotenuse, not hypotenuse over opposite. So I mix this up as VIY over VI, which gives us VIY equals VI times the sine of 30. So let's go ahead, and, and so this looks even uglier, right? But it's important to remember, sine of an angle is just a number. And the sine of 30 is actually a really nice number, so the sine of 30 is actually equal to 1 half, or 0 0.5. So what I get is VIY equals 0 0.5 times my total initial velocity. And I can rewrite my equation as 0 equals 0 0.5 V initial minus 9.8 times T. Oh, that should be yellow, shouldn't it, guys? Let's go ahead and fix that. So V initial times T here. And I'm going to go ahead, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and fix this 2T and make that yellow as well, just to make it a little bit more easy, a little easier to follow visually. Okay, so I've gotten Y. Let's go ahead and fix X now. So I'm going to do the same thing in the X direction. And you are welcome to practice the process on your own. But what you'll find in the X direction is that VIX equals VI times the cosine of 30. And what you're gonna wanna do again is just stick that in the calculator to make your life a little bit easier. So if you don't mind giving me one moment, I'm gonna find my calculator. And what I get when I stick that in the calculator is that the, the cosine of 30 is 0 0.87. So what I get is VIX equals 0 0.87 times V initial. Because again, remember, sines and cosines are just numbers. So let's go ahead and put that in. I have 5 equals 0 0.87 times V initial in the x direction times 2 times T. And on the, on, in my other equation, I'm going to go ahead and call that equation number 1. And then I have equation number two, which says that zero is equal to 0 0.5 times V initial minus 9.8 times T. And what I'm gonna do as well is I notice I just accidentally wrote this extra little X here that doesn't need to be there. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. 
there we go. We have two equations and we have two unknowns. So let's go ahead and solve. Um, so hopefully you remember your system of equations and your methods of solving them. However, I'm sure that you, many of you have forgotten. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to run through how to solve that. Um, so this, uh, so, and I'm going to use the substitution method. So what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to solve for t in terms of v initial. And what I get when I add, so I'll start by adding 9.8 t to both sides. So I get 9.8 t is 0 0.5 times v initial. And what I'll find is that t is equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.05 times v initial. Now, what I can do with this is, this is what t is equal to. So anytime I see a t in equation 1, I can replace it with the right side of my, of my equal sign. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to get is I get 5 equals 0 0.87 times the initial times 2. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in what I have for t, which is 0 0.05 times another v initial. And now I have one equation and one unknown. So let's go ahead and start by multiplying out all of our coefficients. So I, what I'll do is I'll multiply 0 0.87 times 2 times 0 0.05. And I get that 5 is equal to 0 0.087 times v initial squared. The other thing I'm going to do, guys, while I'm here is I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this extra information. Okay. Um, so I've gone and I've erased, erased some extra information, given us a little more space. And I have 5 is equal to 0 0.087 times v initial squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.087. So 5 divided by 0 0.087 is going to give me... Ooh. So 5 again, sorry. 5 divided by 0 0.087 is going to give me that v initial squared is equal to 57. And finally, I'll take the square root of both sides, given, giving me my final answer, v initial, is equal to 7.6 meters per second. And there you have it, guys. You have now learned how to solve the hardest kind of problem you could possibly get asked. So hopefully that feels good. Go ahead, give it a shot. See if you can solve either for problem number four or problem number five.